Dr. Paul here. I'm sharing a, a little pearl. This one's intended for grandparents. So usually I'm talking about pediatrics and parenting. Here's one for you grandparents. If you are 60 years and over, there's a study for you that is titled Effects of Alcohol Consumption on Cognition and Regional Brain Volumes Among Older Adults. And there'll be a link to this at the bottom. Now, what this study showed is that those over 60 who drink the equivalent of one alcoholic drink a day had significant improvements in brain function and delay in onset of dementia and Alzheimer's. You might be going, what? Well, you've heard that a little bit of red wine is supposed to be good for you. Uh, there actually have been some studies recently that it doesn't really matter what kind of alcohol it is. If it's just a tiny amount, it actually has health benefits. What's going on with that? Well, we've known, there were a couple studies back in 1981, there was a Kaiser study that showed what's called the U-shaped curve. And what it's referring to is that at no alcohol intake, you have a very high incidence of heart disease and cancer. At very low heart rates, I'm sorry, at very low alcohol intakes, you have very low rates of heart disease and cancer. But then at the very high alcohol intakes, the risks go back up again. And it's called a U-shaped curve, which is very peculiar to this alcohol intake issue. Dr. Woodrow Monty wrote the book, While Science Sleeps. And this book actually explains explicitly why this is. This is mind-shattering, important information, folks. Here's the deal. Other animals have an enzyme called catalase that breaks down methanol and actually turns it into food. Humans have lost that enzyme. So whenever we get exposed to methanol, we will turn it into formaldehyde. And formaldehyde is the largest cancer-causing agent known to man. It triggers autoimmune disorders, cancer. It's just horrible for heart disease, atherosclerosis, cancer, autoimmune disorders. Formaldehyde is to be avoided. Well, where are we getting our formaldehyde exposure? It's from cigarette smoke. So when they made cigarettes and you ingest some methanol. And methanol then is this tiny molecule that gets to our brain, our livers, our kidneys, blood vessels, where it gets turned, re changed by an enzyme, ADH, into formaldehyde. So it can go anywhere in the body. If you, if you ingested formaldehyde, it'd never get anywhere because it's such a sticky molecule, bam, it's stuck. But that's the, where, so what you really need to know is where am I gonna get exposed to methanol? Cigarette smoke or smoking anything, um, aspartame, NutraSweet, the biggest source of methanol. That's why it's such a toxin, cancer causing, uh, heart disease causing, um, horrible, 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 horrible. And canned fruits and vegetables will break down and release methanol. So what's alcohol got to do with this? Well, here's why just a tiny bit of alcohol is so life saving and protecting. The little bit of alcohol ties up that ADH enzyme and it cannot convert the methanol to formaldehyde. And that's why we have that U-shaped curve. No alcohol at all, you're at high risk because whatever methanol does get into your system gets converted to formaldehyde and you're in trouble. Very high amounts of alcohol, you're in trouble again because it's just toxic, right? It's, it's bad. But at these very low levels, no more than one drink if you're a woman, two max if you're a man, and there are some added benefits to red wine, for example, the resveratrol, which is a known uh, anti-inflammatory and very good for you um, phytonutrient. But I just have to add this caveat. If you're watching this and alcohol is a potential problem for you, it is not worth going there. My family, we have workaholics, alcoholics uh, in the distant family. Um, and just vulnerable brains, okay, that, that just, you just shouldn't go there. In our case, I'm sorry, you just, we cannot take even that little tiny sip of any kind of alcohol because it could trigger that phenomenon of craving and that could be, you know, life destructive. But if you are what we call a normie, you can take a beer and split it. You can leave a, a tiny glass of wine half drunk and you couldn't care less. It might just make sense if you're in that grandparents' age group, to have that little half a glass of wine a day 
or something like that. There are some definite medical benefits. I encourage you to read the book While Science Sleeps and uh, the link to the articles are in the description. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Paul.